Yo, what is up guys? How's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Next.js versus Gatsby. I hope that you're excited and we're going to be getting into the nitty gritty and we're going to be talking about things like server side rendering. We're going to talk about client side rendering. We're going to talk about static side generation, dynamic side generation, which one is better and when is each one better than the other, okay? So this is gonna be super, super exciting. I hope that you're excited and welcome to this freaking live stream. Before we move on, Kyle, keep on this slide. This is perfect. Do we have people in there? Are, are there people live with us? 26 watching now. So who, give me some names from the people that are in the chat. If you guys are here, drop something uh, in the chat. Abdullah. Abdullah, what is up? Curtain. Curtain, how's it going? Welcome, welcome guys. I'm super excited to have you here. And with that said, let's keep rocking and rolling. So what we do here at Clever Programmer, right, is we've had the privilege to work with over 5,000 students and help them go from not knowing that much coding to moving on and getting a job. And our goal this year is to help 5,000 developers get jobs. So for example, my goal is that you, who's watching this right now, that you move on and you actually go and get a job, okay? I would love for you to be able to work at a company like Spotify, Amazon, Sonos, Disney Plus, PayPal, and the list goes on, okay? I would love for you to be able to do that. Would that be exciting for you? I hope that it would. Okay, so let's keep going. Guys, another thing that was really cool and we're really excited to share with all of you is that we're at 900,000 subscribers and pretty soon we're gonna be hitting a million. So it means a lot, you know, when you guys smash that like button and break that like button. And it also means a lot when you get subscribed to the channel. Our family is the strongest, this is a community, and we're about to get that big one million mark. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, before we jump into the actual content of this training, which we are about to do, first thing I wanna tell you is, I've prepared an amazing training for you. If you wanna turn coding your passion into your career and you wanna get a job as a full stack developer, we have launched this training for you. It's a one hour video and it talks about everything you need to know to become a full stack developer. So for example, it'll talk to you about how much JavaScript you actually need to know, how much React that you actually need to know, how much Redux you'll need to know to become a developer, how much Firebase you'll need to know. And of course, we also cover and talk about MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. Combine all of those together and you become a full stack master. That's what that training is gonna cover. So before we continue, do me a favor, click the link below and sign up for that training because it's just gonna be so freaking valuable and it's gonna be one of the best uses of your, you know, one hour. Okay, with that said, let's jump into the content for today. So, first up, Gatsby. Let's talk about Gatsby JS and what is this Gatsby thing that you may or may not have heard of. Okay, so let's continue. Now, Gatsby has about 49,000 stars on GitHub, which is absolutely crazy. If you, are, if you go on GitHub and you see, right, most repos will never have that much popularity, but it's crazy how much popularity that it has and it's because it's freaking good, all right? That's what we'll tell you and it also tells you that it's popular and the community is actually actively supporting it, okay? Other things I like to see when I wanna take on a framework or take on a new library, this is a pro hack. I wanna see also when was the last commit being made, okay? So when I see that the last commit here was being made four hours ago, that's a really freaking good sign. That means it's active. People are updating this thing and changing it seven hours ago, okay? They're making changes thing, uh, to it all the time. So now let's talk about the benefits of Gatsby, okay? So for Gatsby is a lot known for its static site generation and it's blazing fast. So here's an example of a website that's built with Gatsby. It's called marvelapp.com. You could actually go to it and check it out. It's a pretty cool freaking site, has a really cool design. It's simple, it's fast, and, and Marvel, and this is what it's called, right? Here's another example of a website built with Gatsby. Hopefully a lot of you know about React, okay? 
So when you go to the actual official reactjs.org website, because some idiot bought reactjs.com and is sitting on it, <laughs> but the, this one, reactjs.org, where they have the official documentation, they actually built this with Gatsby. This is a perfect use case for when you should actually use Gatsby. And what I mean by that is, this is static. This is really not gonna change much. Gatsby is also really, really good for SEO. So it makes sense to me why they chose to go Gatsby with this and it's just blazing fast, okay? Here is another thing that's really helpful and powerful with Gatsby. If you're ever thinking of making a portfolio website where as a developer, you're talking about your skills, what you know, blah, blah, blah. Portfolio sites are great to make with Gatsby, okay? Blazing fast and simple stuff is good with Gatsby. Here's another example of something with Gatsby. And of course, Gatsby is also mobile responsive. So you can build stuff, whether you know when you want it on a tablet or you want it on an iPhone or a full uh, desktop website. All of that is gonna be really, really good with Gatsby. So the connection I wanna make is whenever you're thinking static things like blog, where there's only like really one creator, whenever you're thinking portfolios, whenever you're thinking personal websites, documentation, I want you to think Gatsby, okay? And how does Gatsby kind of work under the hood? Let's go ahead and talk about it. So we actually, Gatsby actually uses what's called client-side rendering, okay? And how client-side rendering works, it's in this six-step process. So number one, as a user, what you do is you go ahead as a user and request a website. So that's basically when you type in google.com, or you type in marvel.com, whatever website you wanna to go to, right? That's a user requesting. Server sends HTML file with JavaScript link. So the server is gonna send back the file and go, hey, here's the JavaScript file or here's the file and then you can use it. So when you get the JavaScript file back, now Google is activated and you can actually use it and you can type in whatever you want and then it responds to you, okay? Browser, your browser like Chrome, or Safari or whatever you're using, right? That's gonna download your HTML, then browser also will download CSS and JavaScript, okay? So first it's gonna download the HTML, that's why HTML loads fast, then CSS and JavaScript. That's why if you don't optimize your images really well, or your JavaScript code is not optimized properly, your site is gonna take a really long time to load. This is why it's good to optimize your images and all of that. Number five, browser executes framework or library. So this is why if your code doesn't have too many libraries or too many frameworks you're using, it's gonna be fast and it's gonna run much, much, much faster simply because there's less lines of code for your browser to execute. And then number six, the browser loads the website. This is how client-side rend client rendering works, okay? And that's usually what uh, Gatsby uses. Now, let's go to the next one, which is Next.js, okay? And you know, if you guys can't hear from my voice, it's a little bit of my personal favorite, though I like both, but I'll talk about when it's good time to use both of them. This is how many stars this thing freaking has. What the? You know how hard it is to get stars? Every developer I know never gets any stars on their thing. It was so hard for me to even get stars. And we have a, almost a million subscribers on YouTube. Getting stars is almost as hard as freaking getting a rating for a movie on IMDb. You know IMDb, those people are just like, oh no, this movie was not good for me. And like pick, like what the fuck? Like why are you so picky? That's how people are with this. So when I see 65,000 stars, I know this shit is banging and it's like hot, right? And the community is using it and there's community support behind it. And again, the commit 24 minutes ago. So whoever's developing Next.js is literally sitting there in their underwear right this second coding. All right, that tells me there's good freaking support for this thing. And it's backed by Versal, okay? Um, I love actually using Versal and deploying my sites with it. So Next.js functionality out of the box kind of comes with Versal. So, you know, check them out. And what I recommend is star them or watch them. Don't fork them, but you know, star them. It's, it's kind of cool. All right, so now here are the types of websites you could build with Next.js. So this is a perfect example of a website that you could use. And it's not just an example. Marvel.com actually uses Next.js, okay? 
They're using Next.js. And I think Next.js is a better choice if you want to do stuff that's really dynamic, okay? So there might be a lot of things that are changing to it. They could have done this in Gatsby, but because there are a lot of users come logging in, logging out, maybe users can even create some type of content. I'm not exactly sure. But because there's so many users, with that type of dy dynamism in your app, it's better to go Next.js on that, okay? So that's why I think that they're choosing to use that. Next up, we have Netflix, okay? And Netflix and their jobs page, they actually use Next.js to power, okay? And again, they need this content to be dynamic because they're always adding content, taking it out. There's tons and tons of users being created. Users can also create their own accounts. Users can share accounts between each other. Users can change their profile pictures. I mean, there's a lot of user stuff going on. So whenever you think large applications, with lots of users, think Next.js. Here's another popular company that's using this goddamn thing. Have you ever heard of Uber? Uber is using Next. So if Uber is using Next, you should probably consider using Next, okay? And a lot of developers right now who have that skill, you are much hotter in the job market than some of the other losers that don't know Next.js, okay? So add it to your arsenal, add it to your repertoire. Love the comments that are coming in. Love the engagement. We're at about 156 people. Guys, tell me something. Tell me something. Some comments, tell me something that's going on. I wanna know, okay? Is recorded? Yes, so. People ask where they can see more information about the courses. Okay, or, got it. Okay, beautiful. So guys, if you have questions, drop them below. Or if we have questions coming in at the end, I'll also do a much longer Q&A with you guys, okay? And then we'll go much, much, much deeper on that. Let's keep rocking and rolling for right now. Here's another good example of a website that could use Next.js. So if you were thinking about building a website like Medium, where you could make blog posts, other users could sign up and make blog posts, that's a really good time to use um, Next.js. Okay, that's gonna be the way to go for that because it's gonna be really, really blazing fast and it's really good when it's really dynamic and there's tons of users creating content, okay? We got a $5 donation by Abner, from Miller. Abner. Yeah. Who? By Abner Miller. Abner Miller, thank you so much for a $5 donation. That means a lot. Thank you, thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate it. Possible to merge CRA with Gatsby JS? Um, uh, CRA. So c create React app. That's what that is. So Gatsby. So here's the thing, and I wanted to talk about this a little bit later as well. There's a lot of like create React app functionality that you can have with Gatsby, even though they're going to be slightly different. They're very, very similar, and there's a lot that you can do with Gatsby plugins. Okay, and you can do a lot of customization with Gatsby plugins as well. So that's a great question. Thank you for that question. Also, Saeed asks, can beginners start with Next.js? So Saeed asks, can beginners start with Next.js? I think yes. As a beginner, you could start with Next.js. My personal recommendation to you would be learn React first and then learn Next.js, okay? As like the second step. It's a little bit more advanced. If you just wanted to jump in head first, you could, but you're gonna kind of be really, really confused, okay? So I would recommend start with React first. Can I use Next.js with React? Can I use Next.js with React? That's a great question. So again, a lot of the React functionality, yes, like Next.js will have that, okay? So you'll be able to do a lot of React stuff inside of Next.js. So yeah, you, you could. Okay, here's another website that you and I know about, Material UI, which is actually built with Next. Okay, that's what they use. So that's why it's fast and it's pretty freaking awesome. Okay, and server side rendering, right? This is how server side rendering essentially works. So, number one, server sending ready to be rendered HTML. Okay, and then this is your response to browser. So, in the start, it's kind of waiting for the response, right? Then we have browser renders the page, okay? So the page at this step is already viewable. In client side, the thing is not viewable until everything is done. In server side rendering, 
Hey, even before the page is actually interactive, it's viewable already, which is really freaking cool because that's what you want. Otherwise, it's gonna take a really long time for all of the JavaScript to load. So this is the part that I really, really like about server-side rendering, okay? Now, the third step, browser executes your React code, okay? And then step four, the page is now actually interactable. So you can actually interact with the page, click it, watch the video, click on the blog post, thumbs up a po uh, post, thumbs it down, that interaction is now available. But the viewing is happening before the interaction is even available, which is why the, what, the first touch, the meaningful first touch print, that is really, really, really fast with server-side rendered stuff, you know, like Next.js is, okay? And um, we should have had this slide actually for the Gatsby part, not Next.js part, but that's all good. Gatsby, it, a lot of it actually uses GraphQL out of the box. It uses GraphQL for its image transformations and optimizations. It also uses GraphQL for its like the way that it uses its APIs and their REST APIs. So that actually, I really, really like. I really love how GraphQL works. It's much, much, much better and less headachey than your average regular REST APIs less redundant so i really like that functionality that it brings out of the box okay and now let's go to some key points between the two okay and we can probably uh, share the screen now kyle so here are some key points i want you to remember from this okay so both are really really high performing okay and uh, both are actually react js based frameworks uh, javascript frameworks okay so both are JavaScript frameworks that are React based. Now, both also have server side rendering and client side rendering capabilities, but Next.js is more on the server side rendering. Okay, that's actually, that's what uh, Next.js really primarily is. And then Gatsby is more along the lines of client side rendering. And uh, then let's talk about code splitting and caching. So both of them have an amazing ability to code split and cache. Though Next.js has, has some next level code splitting abilities, okay? Even when you go to their main website, you can see that. And what that essentially means is if I have tons of code on my website, right? Like let's take Netflix, for example. When you go to like one movie, it just shows us the code and uses that code that plays that movie. It doesn't actually like load the code for every single movie that's on that page. Okay, so at a very basic level, what code splitting essentially means is we take, we don't use the stuff that we don't need at that point, okay? And normally it's a really complicated process to add code splitting to your app and make your app really lightweight. But with Next.js, a lot of it, if you use it intelligently, kind of comes out of the box. So your app is blazingly fast and really, really light. Then let's talk about React Router versus Next.js Router, right? So for example, um, when you have Gatsby, Gatsby uses built like the React Router. That's how it does its routing. Next.js actually use its own proprietary Next.js Router. Both are pretty cool, but with Gatsby, if you already have tons of experience with React and React Router, it's gonna be kind of a little bit easier to pick up, though even the Next.js Router is pretty straightforward to pick up. Static side generation versus dynamic side generation. You know, uh, Gatsby, I think more on the side of static side generation, Next.js more on the side of dynamic side generation. And then lastly, in order to fetch data and display it, the way that you do that with these types of frameworks is actually you can get the REST APIs using a CMS backend, okay? So a content management system you can use like WordPress, Contentful, or Prismic, okay? I've actually, I have experience with Contentful, WordPress, and a little bit with Prismic as well. So those are really good content management systems you can use. So maybe you can like, for example, host your blog post there, host your images there, and they give you really nice admin point and click tools, right? So it's a head, you can also use headless CMSs if you want. And then you can pull all that count content out of there using, for Gatsby, you can use GraphQL to pull that content out and put on your website. And for, um, for, for Next.js, you can use the REST API and whichever one you want, right? If you want GraphQL with Next, you can use GraphQL. If you wanna just use regular REST APIs, 
you can do that as well. Okay, so great. And now I wanna to touch on a couple of differences between the two. And by the way, are you guys enjoying this so far? Shadja just asked that question that you answered. Gatsby uses graphics and GraphQL. Can you use a REST, a REST API with it? Yeah, so it forces you to use GraphQL Gatsby. So you actually cannot use uh, REST API with that. It's gonna be harder. Out of the box, it forces you to use it. That's why I'm gonna talk about this pretty soon. Actually, let's just talk about it right now. Go to the next thing. So see, Gatsby uses GraphQL out of the box. It's opinionated. It like wants you to go a specific way, okay? Whereas Next.js goes, hey, you decide. But I'll also tell you this, things are a little bit more difficult out of the box with Next.js, okay? Because when I was playing around with the two, I noticed that. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this so far, do me a favor. Smash that like button. Break that like button. That's it, okay? And we're about to drop our banger uh, Disney Plus clone tomorrow, which is gonna be fucking sick. Make sure you guys show up for that, okay? That's gonna be absolutely brilliant. So Gatsby, let's talk about how it handles uh, images, right? So Gatsby handles image transformations out of the box. It's really cool how it does that. It uses GraphQL under the hood to make those optimizations happen. You kind of don't have to do anything. Next.js, you have to figure out how you're gonna optimize the images. That is requires much more manual work, okay? So there's a lot of like more manual work that you have to do with Next.js. But if you're really looking to build a large scale application, then you wanna go the Next.js route. Yo, Fazi, got a question from Abner. I own a roofing company. How hard would it be and how much would it cost to build a site and app for both customers and internal use? $5 donation, by the way. $5 wow, Apner gives another $5 donation. So thank you so much for that. Really, really appreciate it. And the question is, um, he wants to build an app. How hard would it be how to build an app and how much would it cost to build a site for customers Got it. and internal use? Okay, so how hard would it, would it be to build an app, as, uh, especially for uh, customer use and internal use for a roofing company? So apps generally are very expensive, okay? and they're gonna take a lot of time to build it. If you can get a good developer, potentially, like as a CEO, what I would say is like, go to third world countries first and get a prototype up and running before bringing it to the States and then going from there, okay? That way you can get a prototype running of what you're looking for, for like one hundredth of the price or one fiftieth of the price and then if you want long-term developers that also have really good communication skills and you wanna, then you probably wanna bring it here. So I would say, honestly, a couple of thousand dollars and two weeks, one to two weeks, hiring developers should do the trick and you should get your first basic, basic prototype up and running, okay? But just keep in mind, app development is an expensive thing. All right, and um, if you're gonna go take it to the next level, yes, be ready to have like a bigger budget between like twenty to forty thousand dollars to do it. And one more question: How do you stay motivated while doing projects? So, how do you stay motivated while doing projects? And I'm assuming they're talking about coding projects. Yes. Okay. What I recommend is do things that are fun and meaningful to you and exciting to you. So, for example, if you're a rapper or you're a musician. Make an app that is made for musicians that makes your life easier or more fun or more entertaining. Do something that's much more meaningful to you. If you are a chess player like myself, make a chess game, right? If you are good at skateboarding and you enjoy skateboarding, make something that has to do with skateboarding. Make a website that highlights all the best skaters, you can sort it by the best skaters and the worst skaters and then it's like start showing them at the front It has like filters it has search functionality and you can like type in names of different skaters and it'll bring them up So do something that's personally meaningful to you That's what's gonna keep you going and it's gonna be just so much fun instead of like feeling like you're pulling teeth Okay, so that's what I would recommend now, let's go to the next part, which is, you know, Next.js and 
Next.js, what I like about it is it offers both dynamic and static routing and dynamic and static site generation. So like, and now Next.js is getting really good at static sites too. So like portfolio sites and things like that. So in my mind, uh, how I think about Next.js is it basically has everything Gatsby has and then some. But at the payoff, and kind of like the negative part of doing a lot of stuff manually. So if you're doing stuff and you're building something by yourself, it's a small scale project, you're doing it alone, you wanna do something quick and easy, go Gatsby. If on the other hand, you're doing something that you, know, you want potential new people to see and you wanna to apply to Netflix and you wanna to apply to Marvel, probably build a personal site or a multi-user site with Next.js and then have that on your portfolio and say, hey, I know how to use Next.js. That's gonna make you really stand out. It's something really popular that people are doing. Okay, so I would highly recommend you actually at least learn both and spend some time with Next.js, okay? So that's how I would put it. Um, if you're okay with the manual work, then next JS, okay? So that's how I put it. Ease of use, Gatsby. Bigger, more complicated sites, next JS. Make sense? Cool. One last thing I wanna end this uh, off with and then I wanna go straight into Q&A and take your questions and answer them is, of course, make sure that you sign up for that training that we have for you. Let's bring that up, please. That training is gonna show you everything you need to become a full stack developer. So I'm gonna dive deep into the exact amount of JavaScript you need to become a developer, exactly how much React do you need to know to become a develop full stack developer. We're gonna go into Redux and what Redux is in this hot term of state management and what that actually really means. We're gonna go into real-time databases like Firebase, okay? And we're gonna talk about NoSQL databases like MongoDB, which are super popular and important for you to learn in 2021 and going beyond. If you want to learn this and you wanna master all of this, what I need you to do right now is go click the link below and sign up for the free training. It's absolutely free. It's an hour long of just massive value for you, okay? And um, yeah, go ahead and sign up for that. And if you're signed up for that, in the comments below, let me know, done, you know? Or just say Thanos. If you've signed up for it, just say Thanos, okay? That would be amazing. With that said, I hope that you guys really, really enjoyed today's show. And what I wanna do is essentially answer some questions for you if you have any. And maybe even take a, you know, uh, take a call or two from you guys. Okay, so let's, get into that. We can pull out of the slides now, Kyle. I think that's all good. Subo asks, why use React when you have Vue? Um, and Kyle, now these comments on the left-hand side, you can actually show them. Okay. So if whatever comment that he's talking, oh, perfect, I can see them too. So whatever comment Frankie just talked about, see if you could find it and maybe pop I that up on the screen. Why use React when you have Vue? Um, Frankie, is it a recent comment yeah, or? Subo. Subo asks, why use React when see, you have Okay, so see if, you could see if you could find it. But why use React? Click add to broadcast. Perfect. Perfect, there we go, it's right there. So why use React when you have Vue? I just like React better, easier, more understandable. Vue is also good. If you wanna use Vue, you can, but React has more jobs. React is more popular. I personally also like it much more. So that's it. Uh, and then X out of that question, Kyle, please. Next question, Gatsby is server side rendering, right? Okay, so let's see if we can find that and help him find those questions too, by the way. Uh, right there, Jarwish. Cool, so is Gatsby server side rendering, right? Gatsby is uh, not server-side rendering. Gatsby is client-side rendering, okay? So Jarvish, I hope that answers your question, okay? Thank you for being on here. Murtaza just signed up for the training. He just said Thanos. Let's go, Murtaza. That's what I'm talking about. Brilliant. 
How about SEO, um, Gatsby and SEO, Next.js and SEO? Okay, so let's bring Cashfield's question. How is Gatsby good for, cool. So how is Gatsby good for SEO? So Gatsby has a lot of built-in things that are optimized for SEO, okay? So the site mapping that it comes with is really, really good. Your website will start to rank really, really well because the uh, cache that it stores is really helpful for when the bots come to scrape your site, right? When the bots basically ask, hey, what this site is about or what's on this site, Gatsby can quickly uh, statically generate the site. It's already there and it basically lets them know, right? Whereas server side rendering, when the bots come to look at the site, it's not there already. It is rendered later. So the bots just leave. They're like, there's no site here and they just leave. So that SEO for them is not good. But when they come to a statically generated site like Gatsby, they go, hey, the site is there. We see it. We can read all the content that's on there. And so that's why it ends up being really good for SEO out of the box. With that said, Mr. Cashfield, what I will say is Next.js, if you get good with it, you can also do equally good SEO. Uh, what's the main difference between server and client side rendering? So a developer then asks, what's the main difference between server and client-side rendering, okay? So the biggest difference really is how the rendering actually takes place, okay? The fact that server-side rendering ends up taking place, like you can actually interact with the page beforehand, it's loaded, whereas static side, um, whereas client-side rendering, it waits for the whole thing to load. Both are really good, but what I will say is if you're using big apps that have multi-users, go with server-side rendering, where users are creating tons of content. If you're using portfolios type of stuff, do client-side rendering, okay? Uh, Baraket signed up for the training. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for signing up for the training. That makes me really happy. Yusuf asks, how much JS is needed to start learning frameworks? Okay, how much JavaScript is needed to start learning frameworks? Get decently good with it. So what I mean by that is have some experience with programming, right? Have some skills with programming, problem solving skills with JavaScript and then go and like learn, okay? Uh, and uh, Kyle, actually, you know what you should do? Open up Visual Studio Code. So just do Visual and then stop typing, please. Hit enter, perfect. Go to one of the ones that have more code on it. So like open up the, on the left, yeah, open, yeah, just open up app.js maybe, or index, go game slice. Go to the third one, game slice. Third tab, third tab, game slice. Perfect. See if you can throw that behind me. So grab it and just move it to the right. Perfect. And now do me a favor and let go and do hold command option F. Nice. Okay, cool, that looks great. Um, so you can remove that question now. But Yusuf, yeah, you don't really need to know too much, but just know, have like beginner to intermediate understanding. If I give you a problem, like write a for loop, write a if-then statement, those things you should be able to do before you start learning frameworks, because there's no point to learn frameworks if you suck at coding, okay? We got ASCII's Sing, Sing asks, which image optimization solution is better? Gatsby it's right there. Or the green one Gatsby that says A. Image component. Cool. So which uh, image optimization solution is better? Gatsby image plugin or Next.js image component? Both are really, really good, but what I personally found, uh, Assis, is Gatsby was much easier to figure out the image optimization because it just came out of the box, okay? Whereas for Next.js, it took much more time, but both are really, really good for optimization, okay? So depending on whichever framework you're using, they're both gonna be equally good. So great question. These are really good questions. Uh, let me see. So Hussam Ashur, let's pop that one up. And Hussam asks, which one of the following, Redux, Context, Zustand, 
is better for handling state in a next project in general and also in terms of ease of use and efficiency? That's actually a really, really good question. I, I know that you can still use Redux with Next. I've seen people do that, but I know that it's much harder to use Next or Context, uh, or I'm sorry, um, Redux or Context with Next.js. With server-side rendering, I do know that any type of state management is actually much, much, much more complex, okay? I've never looked into Zustand, but for sure I know you can use Redux with Next.js and it's gonna be really good. I don't know if you can use context with Next or not, okay? So if somebody could look that up for me and please drop it in the chat, that would be really helpful. Thank you, great question. Tell them to text the number that I'm about to share. So we're also dropping, um, I'm also dropping my phone number so you guys are able to actually message me directly, okay? We're gonna drop that in the chat, and as a matter of fact, Kyle is actually gonna pop that up on the screen right now. Hit the eye icon next to it. Perfect, so go ahead right here, guys, and shoot me a text right now, okay? And I'll personally answer your questions, help out. If we have a new video coming, I'll let you know, okay? This is my personal phone, okay? And lets me message you. And then if there's any motivational tips, or like don't stop coding type of stuff, I will also share that with you, okay? And I hope it's gonna be helpful. So give me that text below, I'd love to chat with you. Yeah, Mirko says, uh, pop up Mirko's comment, he says, Redux is even harder than vanilla JS and CSS combined, haha. -ha. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Redux starts getting very, very difficult very, very quickly, okay? But with the Redux toolkit that they launched recently, that helps make it a little bit easier to use because Redux is completely immutable and they're using an internal library called Immer. That alone made things so much more difficult to do things and change things. But with Redux Toolkit, it kind of uh, adds an abstraction layer on top of everything else and makes it easier so you could write mutable looking code and do things in a much easier way, okay? So now with Redux Toolkit, Redux is much easier to use. So look into Redux Toolkit. Uh, Mr. Cashfield's comment, let's pop that up. Going from JavaScript experience, I'm guessing I'd need Node.js experience on top of React. For what? For... Needed for what? Okay, that's the question I'll ask you. Um, for, like, for you to use Next.js? Sure. For Gatsby. Oh, for Gatsby, got it, okay. So for Gatsby, um, no, you don't really need Node experience. Yeah, you don't really need Node experience to use it and you need just a little bit of React experience and you should be good. You definitely need React experience but you don't need that much Node experience to use Gatsby, okay? Dope. Uh, I have projects and I wanna start freelancing. Any tips for me? Okay. So if you have projects and you wanna start freelancing, the t what are good tips for you? So the tips are, tip of this, no, I'm kidding. So the tips for you are get really good at coding and build those projects and put them on your portfolio and then apply on Upwork, Fiverr, with the lowest rates possible, okay? Literally like $1 an hour, $0.50 $0 an hour, I'll work for you. Work for free, build up the five-star testimonials and reviews. Just do that for the first three to six months. Work your ass off, don't get paid, okay? Shut the fuck up, don't get paid, get better, get the skills, skills to pay the fucking bills. That's what's gonna help you. Not money in the start, okay? Because you probably suck in the start. That's just the reality of it. It sucks, but it's true. You need somebody to tell you that, so I'll tell you that. So know that you suck in the start, and in the start, forget about making money, just focus on getting your skill level up. So work for free, work for as little as humanly possible, but work in environments where you're being challenged, where you're learning a lot, get the testimonials, put them on your website, get the five-star reviews, put them on your profile, like Upwork, Fiverr, or whatever, 
and then six months later or a year later, then start looking for more money. But get the skills first, because the money will always follow the skill and value that you can provide to the market. That's my advice to you. Saludos de Colombia. What's up, Andres? How's it going, brother? Welcome, welcome to the stream. Rahmet says, I sent message to your phone. Amazing. Hilla says, this got real. Fuck yeah, it got real, okay? I'm not worried about getting real with you guys. I love you guys, okay? Uh, what should we use? Chopra Fox says, what do you think about Jetpack Compose? No idea what that is. That's why I've been avoiding that okay. question. <laughs> but thank you for that question. I don't actually know what Jetpack... MongoDB or Firebase? Great question, Tanjil. What should we use, MongoDB or Firebase? Both are really good. I personally like Firebase a lot more. Why, Kazi? Why? One, I think it's easier. Two, it gives me a real-time database, so things happen lightning fast. Three, I can deploy using Firebase as well. I can host my website, okay? Four, I can get Google authentication or whatever I want very, very, very easily in my app. So for me, it's Firebase. But learn both, because big companies, massive companies also use MongoDB, and they're probably more successful companies that are using MongoDB than even Firebase, okay? So whatever I said, add some grain of salt to it, swirl it, and take it with that. 175 people live. Fuck yeah, 175 people live. That's what I'm talking about. Our stream is way better than those guys. Abdullah is it good to use React with Django, and how much React should I know to use with Django? Let's pop that question up. And Frankie, whenever you get that, also say what their image looks like. That help, that'll help Kyle find that. Thomas Jefferson, black and white. <laughs> Abdullah Shafi said, does it, does it would be good? Does it would be good? Does it, does it would be good if I use React with Django? Okay, so um, the answer to that is yes, it does would be good. If you use React with Django, I think they're very, very powerful. And if you learn React, you can combine it with Django. How you do that is you code the front end with React, back end with Python or Django, okay? Whip up an API and you're good to go, okay? So yes, you can combine them both. Make a killer combo. Ozan says, what about SQLite 3 with Node.js? Absolutely, why not? Use it by all means. I think that's a great idea. Okay, been working, David Cho. Let's look at David Cho, Orange D. Been working with Next for the past month. That is awesome. And David, if you are actually working with Next, uh, shoot me a text message. We're looking for more developers. We're looking for people that have skills with Next, Gatsby, or just React skills and there's a lot of cool stuff we can do, okay? So shoot me a message on that number, I'll reach out to you, okay? Uh, and if he messages on community, actually just... I'm trying to see if nobody has right now. Okay, if they do, ha yeah, just have them message me, please. That would be awesome. So, <clears throat> cool, and he goes, been working with Next for the past month. Next image is really hard to work with, whereas Gatsby's just works. Yes, same here. Exact experience I had. Okay, Gatsby's was so much easier. It's like, why wouldn't you make something as simple as an image easy to do? Why do I have to do rocket science for my images to look good and show up? I don't understand. Okay, certain things are just weird. Let's keep going. Okay, great questions. You guys are asking uh, gay, great questions. Uh, Venom Raiders ask Django versus Node.js. Django versus Node.js. Um... Uh, hit uh, delete, so Kyle, make sure the question goes away. I mean, both are good, it just depends what you're doing, right? If you're doing JavaScript, go Node. If you're going Python, go Django. That's my answer to that one. Text me below, let's go, okay? Text me uh, Gatsby or text me Next, whichever one is your framework of choice, I'm curious. WebStorm IDs, Peter, Jean Cher asks, what do you think about the WebStorm IDE? Honestly, all the JetBrain IDEs are my personal favorite, okay? 
at least they used to be. Now I am in love with Visual Studio Code IDE, though I still, and here's why. Visual Studio Code IDEs are like, uh, they're like uh, crack. You get addicted to it. I haven't done crack, but they're like very lightweight and you kind of get addicted to it and just use it. I loved my JetBrain IDEs that when I would use them for Python and Django because they were much more intelligent than Visual Studio Code. Like Visual Studio Code is like really stupid. I'll like have a variable written and I'll be like writing it in the same file and it won't autocomplete it properly or it'll autocomplete something stupid. Um, I'll be typing something, I forget, like I'll be writing like HTML, I'll hit tab and it'll like autocomplete something completely different than what I had wanted. And I'm like, why are you doing that? That never happened with me in JetBrains ever. And JetBrains was always so fucking smart. It knew how my entire project worked. So like it would give me these auto completions that were genius, like from other files and other whatever. It will know all the pads to all the files perfectly without me needing to add any new plugins. And if I wrote code, that could cause problems between even any of the other project files, even if I was working on like a mega project, it knew and it told me ahead of time. It blew my mind. It always blew my mind. It was freaking amazing. Whereas Visual Studio Code, it seems like it kind of only knows about that like one file and even that it doesn't really know it that well. So if I wasn't lazy and I would you know, I would probably use WebStorm and I would use the JetBrains IDE, but because I just like how quickly VS Code opens, I end up using VS Code. Okay, so that's my answer. Great, let's keep going now. Did Peter respond? Let's keep going. Ooh, lots of, wait, what's going on? Lots of questions go up. Are there any other good questions in this course? Okay, keep going now. Debbie, Davey Reyes asks, how about authentication? What's better to implement? Uh, authentication, I like Firebase because it allows me to add Google uh, really, really quickly. Done. Great question. Hit X on it, Kyle, please. Django versus Node, which is the best for backend. We already addressed that one. Gotcha. Keep going. Okay, Node.js versus Next.js. They're two different things, guys. Go lane, good for backend. What do you think about Laravel? Um, I mean, I don't really know much about Laravel. Any recommendations for VS Code extension? Yeah, so Depot says I love IntelliJ as well. Yeah. Let's keep going now. Okay. Any recommendation? Yeah, so any recommendations for extensions on VS Code? Yes, bracket pair colorizer. I definitely need it for JavaScript. It drives me crazy with its squigglies and squigglies and parentheses and I need bracket pair colorizer, okay? So that's uh, one of the extensions that's very helpful for me. And then I think the other ones are... Um, prettier. Prettier is Better really good. Home. Prettier is really good, yes. Live server that allows me to like show my app and like kind of without refreshing, I can see it running on my local host. Um, Vim is my personal favorite. Okay, Vim I use all the freaking time and they crushed it with their Vim. Brilliant. So that's, I love that. And then there are probably some other ones, but like I don't really use them that much probably. Is PHP dead? Is PHP dead? No, PHP is still pretty popular, but I mean, I just like React and stuff more. I'm coming from Gantby to Next and I'm having difficulty with Next.js. Just please really set the width in advance. When you have it. Yeah, Hussam. Again, this is awesome. So pull that comment up just a little bit, Kyle, on the left hand on the left hand side on Ecamm. So pull that comment up just a little bit because otherwise the phone number was blocking it. You see, pull it down a little bit. Now it's too much. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, so I'm coming from Gatsby to Next.js, and I'm having difficulties with Next image components, especially having to explicitly set the width and height in advance when you have images of different aspect ratios. Hosam, absolutely. This is the thing that we were talking about, about Next.js where image optimization is a lot harder. Whereas with Gatsby, it kind of comes out of the box. So I feel your pain and that's the pain that we all are feeling in the, uh, you know, in the community and in the chat. Okay, so thanks for sharing that. Let's hit X on that. Okay. 
and uh, okay, let's go, Mr. Cashfield. Amazing, Mr. Cashfield goes, I needed this live stream after finishing my JavaScript course. Which JavaScript course did you finish, by the way? And he goes, Gatsby Pro by the end of the year. Let's go, Mr. Cashfield, that's amazing. And thank you for stopping by. Thank you for enjoying this and hopefully thank you for smashing the like button. Really appreciate that. 179 people live. 179 people live, guys, that's absolutely amazing. Ooh. Uh, if you guys are enjoying this, you know, go ahead and smash that like button. That would be absolutely uh, amazing. It helps the video kind of go out to a lot of other people. And then keep punching in and punching out, Kyle. That thing is awesome. Mm -hmm. asks, is React? <laughs> yeah. Peter liked that answer. I knew it. Peter says, your answer about WebStorm IDE was very useful. Thank you, absolutely, you got it, brother. And now hit X on it, please. Is it okay to learn React before JavaScript? So what I recommend with that is learn JavaScript first, learn it well, then come to React. Is it possible to learn just React first? Absolutely, but you were gonna get stuck and it's gonna be bad when you get stuck. So learn JavaScript first. Asis asks, what CMS would you recommend to be used Is it? It's closer to the bottom. It's closer to the bottom, so let's keep going. Oh wow, tons of comments coming in. Thank you guys. Assis asks, what CMS would you recommend to be used with Next.js? I mean, pick your poison, okay? So, you wanna use Contentful, go for it. If you wanna use, oh my fucking lord. Um, yeah, you can, you can use, um, honestly, any headless CMS, any head full CMS you want. Just pick one, like Contentful is good, Prismic is good. I think I ended up going with Prismic. I'm not exactly sure. There's Sanity.io as well, so you could use Sanity.io. Sanity.io looked really clean, and what's cool about Sanity.io is on Traversy Media's YouTube channel, there's this girl that dropped a YouTube video um, covering Sanity.io crash course. So you can watch the Sanity.io, and then implement the Sanity IO CMS with your Next.js app. I think that would be cool. Okay. Nice job, Kyle. Sanyat says, man, you're the best. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Let's keep going now. Derricket asks, steps to learning quickly and perfect merge stack. Mm, let's skip that one. Let's keep going. Uh, what advice would you give to a new upcoming JavaScript That's developer? good one. Click that one. Yeah, Thomas Peter. Yeah. Thomas Peter. That one. Right. Yep. So what advice will you give a new upcoming JavaScript developer? Like what should he slash she do to become competent and capable of developing software or sites? Absolutely brilliant question. Thank you for asking that. Here's my advice to you if you are a completely new uh, or a new up and coming JavaScript developer. Here's what I'll tell you. Please, for the love of God, stick with understanding and mastering the basics first. Everybody out there has this crazy ADD, ADHD that is going on, which is you wanna learn every framework first. React, Next.js, this, that, and the other thing. Do, don't do that. You are gonna screw yourself up permanently and for a really long time. I've had so many horror stories I've heard from people who are going to coding boot camps. They come out of coding boot camps. We test them, we test their skill, and they're like, Bah! And it's not just coding boot camps. It's coming out of universities, coming out of... So please understand this. The name of the game is mastering the basics. Bruce Lee, what does Bruce Lee say? I am not scared of the man that knows a thousand kicks. I'm scared of the man that has practiced one kick a thousand times. That's the exact thing that happens as a developer. You should be focused on problem solving, increasing your problem solving skills. You should be focused on, you know, how can I develop better data structure and algorithm skills? Those deep skills will last you a lifetime, okay? H solve hard, complicated problems on a consistent basis and work on projects that you're doing from scratch on your own 
that will also make you really, really good, okay? So please focus on the basics before you start pinballing and ping-ponging to 80 different things, okay? That is my advice to new JavaScript developers. Yo, we should clip that one. Frankie, we should clip that one. Okay, so let's timestamp that one because that's gonna be helpful. It can be a new video on its own. Um, okay, uh, Peter's question, Peter Jean Scheer. What is your opinion on Vue.js? By the way, was that quite answer helpful for people? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what is your opinion on Vue.js as a Europe-based developer? Is React the main JavaScript framework you would recommend? No, there's tons of jobs with Vue as well, okay? And it's also really popular. So pick your cup of tea and stick with it, okay? So if you like Vue, pick Vue and go with it, okay? It's kind of like having a girlfriend. Is there a better, more perfect girlfriend out there for you? I don't know, maybe, but just fucking pick one, commit, stop being a bitch and move on, okay? That's the battle of the frameworks. Is there a better framework, a hotter framework, a sexier framework? I don't know, maybe. Pick one, get good at it, move on, okay? What matters is what you do with it. The grass is not greener on the other fucking side. The grass is greener where you water it. Life lessons with Clever Programmer, okay? Um, thanks a lot, your advice is helpful. Thank you, brother, appreciate it. What is Lakshya saying? Let's click it. What all skills should one focus on in their first React.js job so that when you switch companies one to two years later, you get a much higher pay? Great question. What you should do as a React developer if you wanna increase your pay in one to two years is become extremely valuable for that company, okay? Go just beyond your job. Go, just be, go beyond just your skills. But if you wanna know, here's what it is, right? Always be learning as a developer. What are the new hot skills that you can learn? So as a React developer, could you pick up Next.js as a framework? Then do it. Could you pick up GraphQL? Then do it. Complacency is the mother of all evil. Complacency happens when you clock in at nine, you look at your fucking time, it's five, and you fucking leave. Do you know, statistically speaking, the people who stay 10% later, okay, and these are real stats, and it's gonna surprise you. People who stay 10% later after work have their salaries increased 40% more than their average colleague or peer. Just by staying 10% longer, you're making 40% more money. Those are the stats. Now let's break down why it works like that. When the boss or somebody's thinking about who's gonna be the next promotion, the person who's fucking staying and grinding hard. That's just a very, very, very simple, bare bone example of the fact. Because the world doesn't work nine to five, the world works 24 seven. So when it comes to your skills and you wanting higher skills, well, you need to, after you're done with work, you need to go home and code and build something. And maybe find a fun way. If you have a wife, maybe build an app for her with React every day when you go home. If you have kids, maybe work on a little game that you can make for them with React, okay? If you are working with React and then you're doing other stuff that's more emotionally connected to you and you're constantly learning new skills, you will be a million times more valuable developer. But if you clock in at nine and you leave at five and that's all you do, your, only, your pay should only decrease. Your pay, in my opinion, should not fucking increase. That's my answer to that. Okay, guys, keep scrolling down fast. I'll spot something, stop. Just go up, okay, the terminal. Yo, Kazi, just wanted to say I appreciate what you do for us and the value that you provide for us. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you for being on here. Thank you guys for sharing this love, for smashing that like button, and also just for coming for support, right? That really means a lot because we're, we wanna make sure we're working hard for you, we're providing a ton of value. So that little comment, you know, it makes our day, it, it, it is awesome, right? Like we have, 
One, two, three, four. We have four people in the room right now. So the people that you don't see, the person who's manning this entire thing right now is Kyle. He's our video editor slash producer slash skateboarder, okay? He's punching in and punch out. Give me one, two, three, bro. Okay, Kyle is fucking doing that. Doing that. So give it up for Kyle in the comments, all right? That's what's happening. A lot of the presentation and the preparation that we had for you, that was Patch, okay? Patch made sure that this thing was put together for you. Patch, come show your face in here. I can do that. Okay, and Patch is also reading your guys' comments and making sure. Check What's it up, out. peoples? Look at that beautiful face. You know, you know. He's the fucking man. All right, we're going out of focus, so I'll just focus right here. So it's a whole team effort that's making it happen, okay? So thank you guys, but I also hope that you guys appreciate everybody that's here. We have Frankie sitting behind me and he's also working. Let me see that Andy, what he said. Andy says, and he quotes Kazi, okay? And he goes, stop being a bitch, pick one and move on, okay? That's absolutely right, okay? Best piece of advi advice that I'm taking to heart in real time, Andy, Yes, my brother, so many people I know are constantly always looking for something better, this better, better business, better this, better this, better this. You just gotta commit, pick, and just fucking keep improving, okay? That's it, all right? That's it. Uh, Mishak says, I personally miss clones with you guys. Don't worry, they start tomorrow. They're gonna be better than ever. It's gonna be fucking sick. Watch the clone tomorrow, and I promise you, it's the best project and the best clone out there anywhere in the world. Completely mobile responsive. We got Firebase, Redux, we got React.js, we got the whole nine. We got a login page, a home page, a detail page. It looks beautiful. So make sure you show up tomorrow at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. whenever it's being prepared, uh, premiered, okay? So make sure you do that. <laughs> Bring him out, nice. Is that related to Kyle or? Thanks, man. That really cleared up my thoughts. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Lakshay. That means a lot. Let's keep going. Why don't you make some tutorials with Gatsby or Next.js? That's a great point. And actually, you know, why not? We might actually make something with Next.js soon. So thank you for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Patch is blurry. Okay, we'll bring him on in the future and make sure that he is in focus for you, okay? Kyle is giving us the valuetainment. All the comments that are being popped up on the screen, Kyle. Punching in and punching out, Kyle. Screens changing on the fly, Kyle. Kyle is managing a rocket spaceship of complexity right now, and it's his first time figuring this out. I mean, guys, it's fucking badass, right? Keep going, let's go down. Are Udemy cor uh, courses and documentation enough for a uh, web developer? I don't know, maybe, but if you wanted to become a heart surgeon, are Udemy courses and documentation enough? Probably not, right? Get real mentorship. Go and invest in yourself, learn, master these skills. It's not just enough to have one little course here and be like, is that enough? Is that okay? Yeah, maybe, but then there'll be people like me and other people who like code and within three to six months have a job while other people are taking years to figure this out. And this is not the flex or say anybody's smarter than anybody. It's because if you have a person like me who's coding for 10 to 15 hours a day and is going crazy trying to find the best mentors on the planet and investing in himself and hiring the best mentors on the planet with every dollar they make, good fucking luck catching up to that. So that's three to six months of progress is gonna be something that's insane, right? Um, Peter, throw that comment up, I love that. Peter says, I sent your comment about your girlfriend analogy to my actual girlfriend and she agrees. Yes, okay, of course she agrees, I love that, okay? And the comment for everybody, you know, was basically grass is greener where you water it, okay? Yes, there could be somebody better, but you have what you have, you make that shit better, and you make that shit work, and you improve that shit every single day. That's why when people get into the battle of the frameworks, to me, that just tells me you're the person that's always looking for something better. All right, just pick something and move on. Peter, boom, there we go. Peter is closed. <laughs> Besides that, thanks for your answer. He goes, I'll commit to React. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Let's give it up for Peter. Kyle, play the clap sounds, please. Hey. Kyle, right here, clap sound. 
Hey, let's go, baby. This stream is lit. All right, weird clapping, Kyle. All right, <laughs> hit X and please exit out of that. Thank you. Okay, keep going down. Beautiful. Paul. Paul Okpara, we got you. Add to bro. Yeah. What would you recommend? Ooh, we're becoming one brain now. I love this. What would you recommend for people going through tutorial hell so they will be able to get out of it? What I recommend for people who are stuck in tutorial hell is work on actual projects that mean something to you that you built from scratch or you can kind of like look up and Google your way out of it. But when you're following too much of what other people are doing, you'll always feel like you're making progress, but you're making actually zero progress, okay? So do something crappy, but do it on your own. That's way better, okay? Even though you'll be like, oh, I didn't really do that much. That's okay, that's way better. Okay, so. Just for 200 likes, by the way. Let's, let's go. go, 200 likes, baby, hey. woo! Okay, um, Azura Din, Kyle, show my comments. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's not your bitch. Uh, he's our bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's our bitch. Peter says, great to hear you're making a Next.js project. Possibly, okay? No promises yet. I'll have some other projects coming up. Okay, let's get out of that Peter one. Perfect. Let's keep going. Maud says, I'm, uh, you gave me an idea. I'm going to do an app for my kids. Okay, dope. That's all good. All good. Keep going. Okay, so guys, with that said, I hope that you enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed it. Peter, thank you for coming in and stopping by. Alpha Beta, thank you for coming and stopping by. Linux Tour, Shubham, every single person that was in here that I can't even name right now. Keep scrolling and I'll try to name people. Rajat, Ibat, thank you so much. Modes, Mohai, Shubham, Azura Dean, thank you so much. Gustavo, Paul. Guys, this has been a pleasure. Doja, thank you. This has been a pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. This is the channel where we're gonna help you become a full stack developer and make a six figure income doing what you love and turning your passion, turning your code into your passion and your passion into your career and your career into a job and your job. No, I'm kidding. All right, so we're gonna help you with that. Thank you guys for being here. I love your beautiful face. This is your boy Kazi from Clever Programmer. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. It's okay, Kyle is finding the end button.